All right. Good neat. Good evening, everybody. I'm Dr. Lauren Fisher, broadcasting your Wellness Wednesday show from downtown Delray, Alexandria. Thank you for joining in tonight. We are going to be having a uh, business highlight tonight, and I'm going to be introducing you to one of our newest and coolest practitioners in town. But before I do that, I just want to give you a little bit of a heads up about the events that are coming up with the Delray Business Association. So as you know, it's COVID and the pandemic, so there's not a lot of events, but there are a few things that are going on that we want to continue for the tradition of Delray and to support our local charities and businesses. So the first thing coming up is the Turkey Trot, the annual Turkey Trot, which is normally held on Thanksgiving in which you and 5,000 5, other people run and then eat yourself silly. Um, so this year the run is going to be virtual, but we hope you still participate. And, um, you know, you have, I believe, like four days to complete it and you can get your bib and take pictures and post it. Um, but the other thing that's happening along with that, and that is at, uh, I believe, alexandriaturkeytrot.com. Uh, but the other part is that we normally raise a lot of funds and food for Alive. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me, our nonprofit partner Alive, uh, we're still committed to doing the best we can to help serve our fellow community. So, what we're going to be doing is collecting food at various locations from November 21st to the 29th. And let's see, there's going to be several drop-off locations, and this all can be found at visitdelray.com. Uh, I think some of the, the, sorry, excuse me, locations, I'm going to look, Dog Store, Waxing the City, Delray Psych and Wellness, which is my place at 1900 Mount Vernon Avenue, and Delray Farmer's Market. So I like to be competitive, so I think there was something about 3,000 items collected last year so i'm really hoping that we can surpass that and that you'll be part of it uh the other thing that's happening is the delray holiday market so given the restrictions that were just announced by governor northam of course we're going to do things very safely and we know there's only max of 25 people so we've really scaled down the event to just have a handful of nonprofits. Uh, who are doing some fundraisers and a few of our local retail retailers. So I believe the Boys and Girls Club are going to be selling some t-shirts as a fundraiser. Uh, PK Move uh, is doing a cookie cutting um, kit, which sounds like fun. Um, I think we have uh, Cassie Stover from Potomac Kempo, uh, Delray Citizens Association, and then a few of our local um, retail, as I mentioned, um, Flora Decor and uh, Truly Life and Pause to Go. So there'll be holiday decor and little like arts and crafts. So if you can, be great to come down and, you know, support your local businesses. We will be monitoring as people are coming in with masks and only letting, you know, five people in at a time. So it'll be outdoors. There'll also be some wellness businesses handing out some goodies and things of that nature. So we hope that you're able to do that. And that is on Saturday, November 28th from 10 to 2 and Sunday, November 29th from 10 to 2. Also, all details can be found at Visit Delray. All righty, moving on today, we are going to go ahead and get you um, introduced to our newest nurse practitioner, Sonia Palmieri of Tranquil Healthcare. She is... Um, she is a woman who has been a nurse for 20 years, but a nurse board certified nurse practitioner for 12 years. And she just started here in Delray. Uh, I believe she is the only solo female nurse practitioner in Alexandria. And we are super glad that she joined Delray specifically in my building, which is a fantastic service for my clients. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Sonia. Welcome, Sonia. Hi, thank you so much for having me. It's awesome to be here. I'm excited to share my news and participate with um, this, this broadcast. It's very exciting. Thank you very much. Yeah, great. I am very happy to have you. And poor Sonia started like the week before the shutdown. So I did. <laughs> I started so, here, yep, in Delray. 
Yeah, and luckily people have been finding you slowly, but, you know, I kept telling Sonia, I'm like, there's so many events, there. you'll get out, the people are on the streets all the time, so, <laughs> so that was a big uh, part of why I wanted to have you here today, too, because you're uh, such an added um, gem and much needed here oh, in the Delray you. area, so I wanted to let people get a chance to know you, so can you yeah. tell us a little bit about, about your practice? Sure. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate those kind words. It's very encouraging <laughs> in the midst of COVID. And um, that is very true. I, I literally signed the lease in March and then it was like massive shutdown everywhere. So we were definitely on pause in Delray. Um, luckily, I do have telemedicine practice. So that was keeping you know, me afloat, um, my practice afloat. And I had started in, uh, you know, on my own, uh, I guess 2019, because Virginia um, finally, uh, approved nurse practitioners to have an autonomous practice. And so I jumped on that. Um, I've been practicing in DC as a nurse practitioner for 16 years. Um, and DC has always, since I've been here in this area, allowed nurse practitioners to have an autonomous practice. But I was very excited to move to Virginia and Delray. Um, as we mentioned earlier, I just think Delray is just the cutest, like authentic little, little, secret nugget of Northern Alexandria, or Northern Virginia, rather. Um, so I was very excited to start here. COVID happened. Um, but, you know, we're being resilient and keeping at it. And um, so my practice, uh, how I came about um, just sort of pulling it all together, it's a it's a evolving, it's, it's constantly evolving. And, um, you know, adding different services, learning about new material, or trying to integrate other modalities into my practice. But essentially, the goal was to really try to uh, fill this gap between primary care and, and psychiatry, um, because there really is a huge need. And, you know, as I've been practicing at the bedside and in clinics and hospitals around the country for years, there's just never been a real um, you know, um, I don't want to say importance, but it wasn't focused as much as, say, cardiovascular disease or GI mm. issues. And so the mental health was kind of, you know, uh, depression continued Lexapro, and that was about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unless, you know, so there was no real conversation um, about, like, what's going on? Why? You know, what else is mm -hmm. happening? How can we, how can we do better? And so I really felt that it was much needed, and especially with you know, in light of all of these, uh, you know, uh, you know, Kate Spade, uh, suicide, and um, uh, the CNN fella, I just forgot his name, it just, uh, the, um, no, anyway, he, but, <laughs> yeah, and, and, uh, Bourdain, yes, uh, oh, Bourdain, yeah. and mm -hmm. so, and then, you know, all the young children, the kids, high school kids, this is just a highly needed area, and I really wanted to contribute, and so, that's, that was mainly where I entered the field and trying to bridge primary medicine with, with mental health and yeah. um, trying to fill that gap. Yeah, and I'm glad you, you know, trended that way because, you know, for me it's hard to imagine not treating the mind and body together. Um, totally, yeah. And so, but you know what, I also would love you to explain is that um, not just focusing on the mental health but the way that you approach wellness and mental health because you know as you know as a therapist I am um, you know quite often we work with primary care doctors and mm -hmm. they will prescribe medication um, but they usually are relying on us for the diagnosis and so on but for you um, your approach to mental health is quite different can you help explain yeah. to the people sort of what integrative medicine means and what your approach is sure um, mm -hmm. so that is a big piece or component of my practice. And, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a nurse uh, by, by my training. I'm an RN first. And so my training as an RN is very holistic and, you know, the whole person. And that's, you know, physical, emotional, and spiritual. Like we, that's was uh, really involved in our training. And, and meaning not so much religion, spiritual, but spiritual as the whole being. And so um, I really wanted to bring that, integrate that into my practice. So my approach is really having a conversation with the patients and really spending time. So instead of a 10 to 15 minute visit, as many of the primary care, you know, doctors are forced to do, I know a lot of them don't want to do that, but um, essentially that's how they have to 
perform out their practice um, for reimbursement purposes. Um, so I'm, I really want to try to open that that channel of conversation and really try. Like I want to hear the whole story. I want to know what's going on. Meaning, like, how is your physical health? What's your past medical history? Your surgical history? Your emotional history? Um, your nutrition? Your sleep? What do you do for exercise? How's your family structure? Who is who do you have for support? You know, really mm-hmm. the whole uh, picture versus the disease. You know, that's really the main focus. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. Did you say that like your first intake is like over an hour? Yeah, my first intake I usually a lot for sixty minutes to ninety minutes. Um, mm-hmm. Sometimes that's too much for people. <laughs> They're like, oh, I gotta go. <laughs> but you know, at the same time, I really do want to hear it. I, I, I I'm very interested, and so. The more that you share, the more I'm able to um, help, you know, so I really can learn who you yeah. are. Well, that's what I would say. It's like pictures of, a, you know, the pixels of a, a, a big picture, right? The more that you have, the more you can help. And I, I, I mean, you say it's maybe too much, but I think most people feel like they're not getting enough time when they're going to see psychiatrists. They feel like they're just another number and they're like saying the same three things and if there's any psychiatrist listening, I highly respect. There's many really good <laughs> ones around here. But I also okay. understand because the time and, and the model. So when I talk to people about your approach, you're like, wow, like someone's going to talk to me for an hour or 90 minutes. So I think it really breeds this oh, good. level of comfort. And, yeah. and and Sonia is not going to tell you this, but um, we've had this experience um with her when she sees our client she writes up a whole two-page report and like really works collaboratively and that's just not something that happens a lot in today's day and age with pcps or anybody else and it just shows how much you really care about the clients that you're working with but also having that like teamwork collaborative approach you know and it's it's funny because i do enjoy um you know, really kind of getting into the nuts and bolts and the little things. And even though they may be uh, just redundant, maybe, or just like elementary, they really are pertinent and powerful when we can implement mm-hmm. them. And so sometimes just having like a reference point to go back to and, and, and just sort of keep people on track, I think helps like, like sort of like a master plan of sorts. Mm. Um, it does take a lot of time to write those those plans, and and I feel like it. Some people who need a little more help and assistance and coaching and guidance, you know, uh, than others. But um, but you know, I I learn a lot from my patients as well. They definitely mm-hmm. help me too. You know, so I have to say it is it is really a um, it's a it's a very healing experience for me too. So I enjoy yeah. it. <laughs> Yeah. And you and I were talking about before, like how some of your approaches may differ. Uh, but you also said, like, if someone wants to stop, just start, and they wanted a general overall wellness check. Um, you mentioned, like, aside from like these extensive questions, what are some things that you may do that are different than what traditional or conventional medicine people may do um, regarding? our first visit yeah I think you mentioned some labs and maybe there's some yeah so I sort of get the whole story and you know like I mentioned before my intake it is lengthy and I do try to hit on some of the key you know triage essentially like what really could use some modification or some assistance or some help or some suggestions and I do really then list like a priority list and so some of those suggestions could be, if the patient's interested, it's not it's not essential, but it does help sort of another layer of, of investigation of some of your personalized medicine and biochemical, um, you know, pathways that are happening that could really help facilitate some some other uh, key issues that we could correct with maybe out medication. So some of those things are personalized testing that um, are a little bit more advanced testing and. Mm-hmm. Um, we mentioned a little bit like some of the organic acid tests, um, some of the food sensitivity tests. There's a metals test, a toxicity test. There's there's a lot of really cool stuff. There's even pharmacogenetic testing you can do if you're somebody mm-hmm. who's been on multiple you know psychotropic medications and you really haven't been getting the F, the it's very confusing uh, or that you haven't gotten the effect you want. We could we could run that and a lot of insurances are actually paying for some of those. So it's just like extra tools in the toolbox to really comprehensively you know, take a snapshot of what's happening. 
Yeah, because especially my understanding with the genetic testing, right, it's going to show you um, some indicators of which medications are more likely to bind or be more effective than others, mm-hmm. correct? So, yeah. whereas That's a lot right. of times we're seeing clients are just going through trial and error. Um, right. And, try, but, and, and trial and error yeah. with SSRIs or antidepressants things, it could be four to six weeks like before Definitely. you know effectiveness. So, you could be wasting a lot of time potentially, yeah. or I let me... To turn that around and say it may be more efficient and effective to be doing a more informed approach with right and sometimes choice. you know that's not my first go-to is the mm-hmm. pharmacogenetic testing because uh you know it's like the genes and the drugs phenomena so sometimes our genes affect how we metabolize drugs maybe mm-hmm. we're a hyper metabolizer or this one just you know doesn't affect us at all i've had that actually many times in some of mm-hmm. my folks that but these are the ones who've ha- who've already been on array of medications and mm-hmm you know, over the last 15 years, they've tried, you know, 10 different drugs, and mm-hmm. they're just still at the same, they, they're still struggling. So that might be the, the you know, the, the patient that I would propose that to. Um, so that it does seem to narrow it down. It can, yeah, in some yeah. cases, you're saying, yeah. So, so in a lot of ways, you know, you're, you know, based on what people are coming in, you're assessing and like, mm-hmm. you know, recommending the best alternative things to help get yeah. answers. So, we had talked earlier and you'd said, yeah, people just, you know, want to come to you for their overall wellness, emotional wellness, but like, when else are you seeing, or would you recommend that people consider maybe an integrative, um, medicine or medical approach versus a conventional? Um, I think, I mean, so my framework is a little eclectic, I guess you could say, because I do, um, so I'm not a primary care doctor, so I, d- I do want to say that I'm not a primary care provider. Um, my my main focus is integrative medicine for mental health and wellness, and in addition, the other arm of my service of the wellness is some anti-aging and some regenerative medicine and mm-hmm. aesthetics. So back that up, my main focus really is uh, mental health and wellness, and so in that scope, I'm able to collect information from folks that aren't feeling well. And oftentimes our mental health, you know, if you're not feeling mentally well, you're not well. And so I don't care if you have high blood pressure or, you know, you have, um, you know, cardiac disease or, you know, rheumatoid arthritis. If you're mentally not together, it's just there's no joy in anything. You know, you really need to have your mental health intact first before you really are well and so Mm -hmm. um, healthy, you know, so. So that's sort of my first approach. And so in addition to that, um, you know, the the integrative part comes in because you can also investigate some of the other the other avenues of what's happening. So, you know, if your stomach is hurting and you've been to multiple doctors and they can't figure it out, they've diagnosed with IBS and you can't Mm -hmm. get past that. Sometimes there's other issues that could be that could be a component of that. And part of that workup is mental health. Uh, And in addition, what other things are happening in your lifestyle, your stress levels, your work environment, you know, your relationships, um, what are you eating? What does your apartment look like? Is there mold? You know, do you have pets? Do you have allergies? So it's really Mm -hmm. a comprehensive lifestyle check as well as your physical health. So I can kind of dive into the conventional side and sort of like, you know, go through some of those common ailments that, you know, a lot of folks have, and then also shift over to the integrative side and nutritional deficiencies and maybe some, you know, sleep apnea or, you know, there's a, there's yeah. a lot of things to check off. Yeah. It seems did I answer like your it's, question? I feel yeah. like I, I Yeah, no, 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 it did. <laughs> okay. It did. I mean, and you mentioned something that was important because we're seeing an increase in people who are dissatisfied with the answers that they're getting Mm -hmm. or not getting and like I think uh, the irritable bowel is a big one right a lot of people are having digestive issues and um many people are like hey I don't feel like I'm understanding what the root problem is I'm giving a medication but it's not going away right Right. sleep is another one we talked about and so there's obviously been a lot of research about the uh, gut health 
brain right. and gut health. Yeah. Right. And yeah, totally. used to be this belief if you were if, if you were stressed out, you know, that was what's causing, you know, your your physical symptoms. Right. But now we're seeing that, right, your physical symptoms can also be creating your mental um, or contributing right to depression, mm-hmm. anxiety and other cognitive issues. Um, can you talk a little bit about the brain gut the gut microbiome yeah. connection? Yeah, yeah little- that's that's definitely a hot topic right now. And I think um, we'll see a lot more information coming out. I mean, I think it changes daily on the new data that's coming out. And there's a lot of, you know, trials that are happening. But um, basically, the idea is we're finding that our gut is our second brain. And we have so much so many components happening in our, um, our gut lining. And that's from our mouth, you know, down to our, um, our anal canal and in yeah. our, our exit. So it is very important to maintain the integrity of our digestive and our gut health. So it's a long explanation. It's a it's a it's a big answer. But basically, um, they're finding that the healthy microbiome is essentially being overtaken by some of these toxicities that are in our environment that we may not even know Mm -hmm. exist. And so it's, it's like a, basically a a years of chronic inflammation from things that aren't so acute, you know, it's not as if you get stung by a bee and you have this histamine release and it's this big, you know, swollen piece, you know, area, red and painful and swollen. It's, it's a long, slow, steady, um, inflammation from say, you know, the food we eat, we, we were eating since we were a child or the air quality or, you know, the grass maybe in our front yard has been sprayed for years. And so, um, or just stress, stress is also one, mm-hmm. sugar is one. There's so many things that can really upset our integrity of our, of our gut. And so the idea is to really just try to, um, uh, nurture our gut health. And that means our microbiome right. because they're finding that a lot of these toxins that are being created by the, the bad gut microbiome is leaking into our systemic system because of mm-hmm. leaky gut or just because of it's overtaking the intestine, you know, it, it, we're physically feeling it in, on our inner, inner lining of our gut. Um, and so then th- through the vagus nerve, they're finding that there is information and toxins are able to travel from our gut to our brain and it's interfering with cognitive function, especially ADD, um, ADHD, autism, and with children, uh, there's been some pretty decent studies that have shown that just food in itself, if you just change some of the ingredients in our food, mostly plant-based, vitamin-rich, organic, you know, low sugar can really Mm -hmm. affect children. And so, you know, I think hopefully this will uptick into the adults and we'll have more solid studies, but it changes daily. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's important because I mean, you know, I think, you know, too, I think people are very resistant to changing food. Yeah, people and paying more attention to it, but uh, at least you know definitely. And I think that it's it's a commitment. You know, it's definitely a lifestyle change, and it's just about consciously eating and picking and choosing what we put into our bodies and trying to just optimize our health. And that's the easiest and the first step we can do is, um, you know, consciously picking our food. Yeah, or selecting you- food. Yeah. And, you know, I think that what's important here is that, like, when you mention all the things to look at to understand a, a problem of the root, like, our bodies are a very complex system, right? Mm-hmm. Our mind and our body. And I want to encourage people who are struggling with unknown pain or other disorders that they haven't had an answer to, um, to not give up and maybe consider exploring um, at least, you know, integrative or functional medicine, because there have been several people who I've known who have intuitively felt like something is off, something's wrong, and they were being dismissed because they wasn't being caught, but they're going to multiple, multiple specialists, and they ultimately got their answers, and sometimes it was not as simple, but like just someone identifying the toxicity and then the inflammation and the combination thereof. Mm-hmm. So I say that because I think there's a lot of people who just accept that well this is it um and i think there's a lot to be learned so thank you for kind of explaining you yeah. know a very complicated a short answer <laughs> yeah um uh let's see yeah so someone has a question um which i think you sort of hit on but in generally do we what do we know about foods um affecting thyroid function um 
so th the thyroid is um, a gland that can, uh, so that's a loaded question, but let me just try to break it down. Um, and again, this is not medical advice, so I do want to put that out there. Mm -hmm. If you want to make an appointment, I encourage you to go ahead with your primary care physician or somebody like myself. But um, just a general explanation with thyroid and food, uh, the thyroid is something that attracts toxins is what we're finding. And so oftentimes if you have these inflammatory underlying you know, processes are happening, the thyroid is something that does attract these toxins. And so it can it can interfere with the function of your thyroid. And so finding that some of the antibodies pop up and the TPO antibodies, which then um, put you in a Hashimoto's category. And that is a, you know, if, that, if that's what we're talking about, other thyroid functions could just, you know, there could be other endocrine, endocrine issues. And so that would be, a, you know, multiple tests as well that you could see with your physician. But regarding the food and thyroid relation, there is some some papers and some data that's shown that gluten interferes with thyroid. Um, and to drill that down more, a lot of the gluten in our in America uh, is highly processed and has a lot of, you know, not so great ingredients. And so some of those toxins um, are are sort of linked to thyroid disease. If if that's what the, the caller was asking, I'm not sure. Yeah, no, you answered it great. And. Uh, before we move on to your anti-aging remedies, <laughs> uh, you know, if you were to say one or two things that could just support gut health that people okay. could do right now, what would you recommend? Yeah, I think that would be a good thing for, for I mean, as of March, gut health is definitely part of our immune system. I mean, it's always been part of our immune system, but highlighted more so with COVID. Sure. Uh, so, so to focus on our gut health is, is one easy thing we can do to help our immune system. And um, what I'm taking currently is a probiotic because that does help introduce um, the healthy probiota into our gut to help our immune system. Our, our gut is a big, um, you know, immune uh, fighter. Um, so, and also vitamin D supplements. That is something data showing that um, does help support your immune system against COVID. And zinc is a big one uh, that also helps your immune system. They found that zinc can um, actually penetrate the cell membrane and uh, decrease the replication of some viruses. And um, what else? A prebiotic is good. So that helps uh, like things like fermented food. So things like kombucha and kimchi, you have to be careful because, or sorry, kim kim kimchi is good. Kombucha, you have to be careful because it does have a lot of sugar uh, in some of those drinks now. Um, and to stay away from sugar, that's a big thing with our immune system. So those are just some quick things I'm off the top of my head. <laughs> so basically you're saying I shouldn't be eating the two to three Oreos every evening <laughs> that I'm stuffing in my face. We can <laughs> yeah, we can limit yeah. it. I know it's, it's hard. It's not easy. Transition. I mean, it's just to constantly try to look at what, what's in our, what's in our, what's in our cabinets, you know, our refrigerators right now. And it's hard because you do want to eat, you know, yeah. Americans. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know. And then when I'm in a good frame of mind, I'm like, wow, I want to like nourish and like take care of my body and everything I put in it like should like make it run great. And then other yeah. days you're like, oh, this stuff, it tastes so I good know. though. But right. But that's, that's a, it's a lot of pattern breaking, right? We're but human. overall, yes. <laughs> we're human. But I think, yeah, when you do start eating cleaner and you cleaner. feel better, you start to be like, wow, I, I can sleep better and yeah. I... I can breathe better and then, you and, know. And one, one quick and easy, great option, uh, which I do often, my kids love it, is uh, soup. And so if you just incorporate bone broth with your soup mm -hmm. and lots of vegetables and lean organic meat, um, that's such an easy way to really pack in a lot of vitamins and nutrients and, and immune health. So. Okay. Awesome. So I want to leave a few minutes to talk about your anti-aging okay. stuff. Yeah. So fun stuff. you decide, yeah, I think it's fun. So, um... You've decided to incorporate this as part of your practice because can you tell us why? Yeah. So on the wellness side, um, it was really attractive to me to kind of see what other options, um, you know, as I'm in my 40s myself. So, of course, I'm interested in a personal, you know, interest a little bit. Uh, so, so, you know, um, trying to like seek out, you know, the, the most optimal, less toxin kinds of interventions I could do. I, I came across PRP, which is platelet-rich plasma. 
Mm-hmm. And um, it's really cool. And you can use it for, you know, your hair follicle stimulation for hair growth as well as um, your, you know, facial. So you can introduce oh. collagen. Is this the production. vampire facial that we hear of? <laughs> right. So that is uh, one of the, of the we, modalities. Yes, the vampire can facial. We, uh, can we go ahead and put the video up? So I had a Okay. All right. So they just watched the video. Okay. So that was a patient of mine yesterday. He allowed me to do a quick little video. Um, So we actually were able to draw his blood and we spin it. And so you you just do a little, you know, antecubital blood draw and we spin his blood. It doesn't take a lot. And so what happens is you are spinning and centrifuging out your red blood cells and it separates from the platelet pour to the to the red blood cells and then in between is the the platelet rich and so that's where we want to we want to go that's where the, all the the gold is and in within that platelet rich we try to harvest out the the, the best uh platelets and we essentially microneedle that back into your your face and so mm-hmm. it does look bloody but it's not the patient bleeding it's the actual blood that we're incorporating on the skin like a serum and so it's little micro channels and it allows the the product. It could be it could be PRP. It could also be hyaluronic acid. It could be vitamin C, vitamin A serums. And it just helps really um, nourish the skin and stimulate collagen, and has the growth factors that resurface the skin. And just um, it's good for fine lines, dark circles, some mm-hmm. acne. Um, so it's really a neat holistic way to help your skin. I would say get a, a truly food. organic facial. <laughs> right. <laughs> truly. And you already said also that can be used for um, stimulation uh, of hair, hair loss. So right, and I've had for men or women, mm-hmm. men and women. Women are great responders, um, and so I do encourage you to get a workup as well because there are other um, reasons why we may be losing our hair, and we don't want to miss that. But um, essentially, if you're interested, uh, it's a, the same idea. You you know uh, centrifuge out your red blood cells, harvest the PRP. And then with this, we, we do inject with needles onto the scalp and into the, um, into the scalp, uh, the hair follicles to try to stimulate the hair growth. And then I also do an extra step with a lot of uh, services that don't do, but I do micro needle on top of that. So you are getting an extra stimulation um, and you're infusing the PRP into your, your scalp. And so the recommendation is, is one treatment every three, three to four months and then a maintenance every six months and then, every, and then annually to help... Um, Okay. Awesome. And you also, also offer Botox and injectables and fillers because you had said that you said, why not if people want to enhance their natural beauty, right? And that makes them feel well. You believe that's part of the holistic process. I do. I do. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, people are, do ask about it. They do want that because they know that first, you know, Botox is by Allergan and they're such a huge pharmaceutical. So they have all the marketing. And so people, the, the, people know that. And so it's, um, it's a simple, um, injection into, and it's an anti-recal treatment. It lasts about three, you know, three months. Um, Mm -hmm. and, um, it's similar to, um, I know it's not similar to hair. I I say this as to, to my fellow females, it's like getting your hair colored. It's not, it's not organic. However, Xeomin is marketing themselves as the the most purest um, anti-wrinkle injection because they do have the, the minimal amount of proteins versus, the other ones on the market so I just will put that out there so yes and and PRP can be injected into your face as well if you're looking for more of an organic so I have I have some options <laughs> yeah and you also right now you are um, seeing uh, clients for those type of procedures in person right I am yeah thanks mm-hmm. for that I am and uh, we are I, I you know full COVID precautions we check your temperature before you come in masks hand washing. I'll text you when you can come in the building because I want to make sure there isn't, you know, cross, you know, crossing wires with someone else yeah. with their, their, their airway. So we definitely try to make it the cleanest and safest. As possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, to wrap up, so where are you okay. located? Thank you. We are at 1900 uh, Mount Vernon Avenue in Delray, uh, Alexandria. Mm-hmm. And I'm in the Delray Psych building, uh, corner pocket. <laughs> 
Okay, <laughs> corner pocket. Corner pocket. Um, so, uh, do you have, is there any specials or holiday um, promos you're running uh, in the next month that you'd like to share with the audience? Yeah, I do have a 10% off for new new clients, um, as well as if you refer a friend, uh, you and your friend get 10% off the next visit. And then for the holidays, I'll be at the holiday market, um, and I'll be offering some gift cards if folks want to buy so if you spend $250 on a gift card, I can give you $50 cash card back um, to you as a gifter or you yourself, and also some uh, lower cost per unit on some of the, the anti-wrinkle injectables for a year. So you can bank, you can bank your, your injectables now and then mm-hmm. use it within a year. Okay, great. And yeah. where's the best place for people to find information if they want to read more about your practice or find out about your specials? Um, I, my website is, uh, tranquilhealthcare.com. Um, uh, welcome to email me at Sonia at tranquilhealthcare.com. Uh, I have a Facebook page and an Instagram page, so I'm, I'm available. <laughs> okay. Okay. Awesome. All right. Well, yeah, thank you. To answer so- any questions. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing uh, your time with us this evening and helping Uh people to better understand what you do, as well as just the importance of the holistic and integrative approach to mental health. We are very happy to have you in the neighborhood. Yeah, thank you. I'm very excited. I'm happy to be here, too. Thank you very much for for having me. You're welcome. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Alrighty. So in conclusion, folks, I just want to thank you for tuning in tonight. Uh, I also want to let you know that tomorrow night is the Virginia Emo show at 7 p.m. Uh, her guests are uh, Agenda Alexandria, um, and the focus is going to be Alexandria's businesses and how they can thrive during the pandemic. So as we know, that is uh, ongoing information that needs to be updated um, and very important episodes so please tune in especially if you are a small business um the two board members that will be um the guests are frank fannin and rod kako all right and so in conclusion just remember to be kind and be the good news and